What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are doing yet another video back to back days. So we did Lashley before with the Mellow Mask. We're doing Captain Lou Albano with the Bulldog plate. Again, another crap ass plate that I received from the chests. I could not figure out who to put this on. Not gonna lie to you. I am under the complete impression that it is solely meant for Zombie Lashley or Bulldog, and I only have Bulldog, and I don't like Bulldog. And I don't have Zombie Lashley because that son of a bitch just keeps eluding me every day. So we're going to try it on Captain Lou. I do have Captain Lou at six star. I do enjoy Captain Lou. He is a lot of fun to play with. The medals right now are not ideal. These are ones that I just found lying around, so I need to level them up a little bit. I just don't have the parts. So kind of wasted those in the Lashley video trying to get that metal up to 200%. We do have a 25% HP boost on the belt, which does help showboats, um, especially if you take them silver. So we are half Fury 2, half Fury 1. So we got 60% on everything outside of red gems and yellow gems. If you don't know the Bulldog Bracers, whenever you generate 10 or more reinforced gems, increase your yellow gem damage by 25% and your red gem damage by 75% for three turns. The three turns kind of does play dividends here. It does stack. So how we're going to rock this today is we're going to go with the bear hug color submission, choosing eight gems to make into purple gems. We're only going to do 184,000 damage, but that's all right. Because the remaining, reinfor or remaining submission gems turn into reinforce. That, along with our running clothesline, we're going to make the bottom row into two-turn juggernaut gems that will modify four random gems into reinforced gems on every countdown turn, make 17 reinforce into red gems at the end of the countdown. So what I'm hoping is, hold on one second. <coughs> Excuse me, I had a tickle. What I'm hoping is that this is going to trigger the bulldog plate enough to increase the damage necessary to put someone down. Am I expecting this to be fast? God, no. But for requirements and such, he's a legend, so a lot of the times legend requirements kind of suck. Um, if you have Apollo Creed, Apollo Creed is clearly a go-to for a lot of people. He's not one of my favorites. I absolutely hate using him. But that's just my opinion. You all have your own opinions. We get it. So what's going to ha wind up happening here is what we're going to do is we're going to lay down our juggernauts first put in our bottom row and then we're going to do our color submission basically keeping everything as as far away from the juggernauts as possible some might get broken some might not but that's going to lead us into turn two wind up punch our trainers for this are going to be junkyard dog doing 35 percent mainly because i couldn't find another reinforced coat or trainer on my roster at least maybe there is one but i i just didn't find one that had a high enough percentage to make a or make a difference and then, obviously, Yokozuna. The reason why we have Santa Hogan for this one is Butch and Santa are going to allow for Bear Hug and Running Clothesline to go off turn one in any sort of feud. So that's really the only reason Santa's here. If I could get away with it, I would switch out Santa for a better reinforce, possibly a 12K if, I, or if one existed, but in my roster, it does not exist. So what we're going to do with this, we're going to fight Sammy just like we did in the Lashley video. And we're going to see if this works out right. If it doesn't work out the way we hope to, it's a waste of the plate. And we'll most likely wind up switching to triple yellow. I'm going to still do that in this video. Just because I want to see what his damage is in comparison. Um, whether it's plate setup is good or non-plate setup is good. Either way, we're still going to test it all out. Let's get in here against Sammy. Sammy's now become my new favorite punching bag. Eddie Guerrero kind of fell off the screen a little bit. So it looks like we got one potential where he's going to break it, but let's just hope it's not, you know, detrimental to our progress here. So we're making purples. Clearly, we're going to break as many purples as possible, and then we'll leave some behind as a nice little farewell. Like I said before, this is not going to move mountains. The submission isn't at least. We lost two of them. We lost the third one. That's okay. He's going to have another turn now because of that wild card break. Yep. Because that's a thing. And now those are going to pop. This is the problem with Captain Lou is all of these are just now going to pop. He pinned us. So let's see what this damage looks like. Yeah. 
Could be a lot better. If we were able to run our gauntlet a little bit, it probably would have been a lot, lot better. Let's see if we can get it off this time. Hopes and dreams, my friends. Hopes and dreams. We'll just leave one behind this time instead of three. He just hit a killer cascade that really just kind of brought tears to my eyes a little bit. There we go. All right, now he's controlled. Those are going to pop. Go up there. We're going to hit this. Let's see what the damage looks like here. Eh, respectable. 1.6 is, is respectable. Can't be too upset with that. We did break a lot of our reinforce in that method there, but... Let's... Okay, we got a good cascade there. So 1.4. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. With how old Captain Lou is, really, that's not too big of a shocker. He is ready to go again, so let's go and drop him down to size. Let him understand that this is our yard, not his. We're going to obviously hurt this one a little bit, but it's kind of the nature of the beast right now, especially with our gem placements. There's not a whole lot we could have done about that. Could have avoided it, but he's going to break it one way or another anyhow. And those pop. Get that up there. This is a walk for sure. But let's see what happens. Oh, we can't double up on it. It won't cover those, I don't believe. I think it'll only do this one, and these ones will remain too. All right, we'll just give him a chance to cook a little bit. He might wind up hitting us, but that's a risk we are willing to take. 1.1. It's really not that bad. It's a... It is a hack slash method for sure. That's that's what I'm reading from this is. Again, another defensive kind of measurement uh, similar to Lashley. Do I feel like this plate is making a world of difference on him? Not really. If I'm being honest with myself, I'm really not that impressed by it. I think all heart plate would probably benefit a little bit more. And that's only for the submission portion, really, just because the gems coming from that are purple. So that's really the only thing I can think of there. Oh, that was a pretty solid pin, though. It wasn't fast. We're looking at probably six minutes for the fight, but it's still beneficial. I mean, especially if you have Captain Lou and you pull the bracers. So let's switch over to the triple per or triple yellow real quick, just to kind of see what comes of that. Clearly, the damage is going to be a little bit different since I don't have a yellow move damage increase on it. So our finisher isn't exactly going to be glorious. Why did I just do that? That was a misclick and a half. So his triple yellow setup, what we're going to do is we're make four columns into mobile gems. Then we're going to increase our yellow gem damage by 95%. And then make all immobile gems into yellow gems. A consistent recycle, which I appreciate. Since we don't have, uh, in my roster at, at least, I don't have an uh, affiliation belt for Showboat Cena, so the 45% increase is not going to apply to me. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to throw on Asuka on there for just a little bit more of the move damage. I feel like that's going to be probably a little bit better trade-off in the long run. And then clearly here we want to go with a mobile gem. So we're going to go with live or acro live. And then we're going to go with Hall of Fame taker for the yellow. Just to kind of increase it just a bit. Now in feud, this is not going to go off turn one. 1000% 1, because this is only six. So you'll have seven on the turn off. So you will have to swipe. But it is possible for you just to do the column breaks or columns. Turn the columns into a mobile gems. Swipe if you have a yellow match on the board and then go off. So I'm just kind of hoping the or the pressure is there one way or another, you know. Increasing by 95% should be a good thing. I would much rather see him have um Fury 2 across the board for this one. That's my ideal setup. But who's to say? You know, I'm just really hoping the damage is here. I'm hoping it's at least 2.5. I'll be happy with 2.5 mil. 2.9. So, see, I'm not exactly upset about it. So, that's a positive. 
Oh, we're still going on the increase, so that's good. What does that increase look like? Is it two turns? For two turns. Fantastic. So now we're up to 190%. So I'm hoping I'm hoping for at least four. At least four mil. I'll be okay with four mil. Uh, 3.5. Just shy, but still golden. So and it's a lot faster. Let's put it that way. It's a lot faster than the other build, especially with the bracers on there. However, it is time sensitive. So I'm wondering if maybe with uh, Full Fury 2 and maybe an MP reductor, reduction coach, maybe even two, it could be a little bit beneficial in feud, but highly doubtful. This is more, this is more a speed run for tours, to be honest with you. Captain or Captain Lou, I feel is going to not be that great come feud time. I feel like he's going to be super slow for boss battle. However, I am looking at it in a boss battle perspective. Having this on constant rotation with this, the suplex going in the back, it's going to take you a minute to get there, obviously, in boss battle. Um, he's going to be a little bit slow, and maybe the animation speed is probably about 20 seconds. So you're looking at needing... Uh, Acro Dom and NWO Hogan in the same slot to get those fully charged quickly. But once you get him to go off, he's going to go off fast. So possibly an alternative maybe for a uh, shield breaker for boss battle. Definitely the triple yellow. So the bulldog bracers being on him means nothing to me now. This needs to go off and I need to find something else. Maybe a generator potentially. But, nah, I, I don't even see that. Uh, possibly an MP increaser, to be honest. Especially for the submission setup. Maybe finding a way to charge this faster, better. I don't know. I do realize that he has a neck breaker that does protect gems. And, oh, well, let's give that a shot. Maybe this will be a little bit faster. Who knows? Who's to say? So how do we want to run this one? Does it fit with any of our potentials? So it's only two gems. So that, that doesn't bode well for me. Could go triple red. Now, I still don't see the, I don't see the positive for this because it's a potential that the running clothesline could throw the reinforced gems over the check gems. That's really what it's coming down to. So I don't see that as a possibility. I do, however, believe that the triple yellow is going to be really good for tour requirements and potentially a boss battle. So that's my interpretation for all of it. Unlike the Lashley video, I don't see a point in the Bulldog Bracers being on him. It didn't help as much as what we would hoped it would have been. <clears throat> Maybe... Actually, now it just popped into my head. Let's try one more thing real quick. I realize this is kind of a long video, but I really wanted to do a deep dive to guarantee that how I'm rocking this is how it needs to be rocked. So we are going to go back to how we had them before. But instead of this portion right here being for Junkyard Dog, let's go with zombie taker or uh, zombie Austin. And I would know that he is on someone right now. Yep. So let's go there. We're going to switch this out for Yoko because that's the only one that makes sense to me. And then let's go move damage. We will go with. Let's go with Logan for right now, even though possibly having that one extra turn would make a difference. So we're looking at, oh, that's seven turns. This is going to be rough because <clears throat> we're going to move that up to eight turns. We're going to go eight turns. So we're looking at eight, 16, 24. So we're looking at 2.4 mil here. So we're, let's just hope that this doesn't, isn't detrimental to our health. Maybe this is one of the ways to go too. Let's just try this. I think this is going to take away from our jugs, though. I think it's going to offer way more um, potential for him just to shatter all of our hopes and dreams. 
that's just my opinion, though. No, scatter those. Scatter those a little bit. <clears throat> that's gonna... Okay, cool. I was really hoping that didn't do a line break. Okay, so we did lose two of our... Or three of our jugs. There we go. Hit this. Since they're all available, I'm wondering if it's mainly just the way I was playing. Okay, so those did reset those. Fantastic. Okay, so I was mistaken with the first run through that it wouldn't cover those. We're re-getting everything set back up. Hopefully he stops breaking our jugs. We're doing a good amount of damage. At least with our submission, we're doing a good amount of damage. Making sure to keep him completely bodied. 1.6 off of that. That's respectable. Hit there. And we still have some on the board, which doesn't matter because the jug's about to pop anyways. Let's see what this damage looks like. 1.9. Okay, so I think we're on to something. I think it was just the way I was playing. I think this is a stacking thing. At least that's what I'm reading from this, is it's a stacking deal. So maybe that's how we how we perceive him a little bit is he's a stacker. With it being I think 3 turns for that. This is this is actually boating very well. This is doing good work. I mean our reinforced gem damage could be a little bit higher. But, you know, I can't complain too much. This is something I can see actually being worth using for tours as well. <clears throat> 1.3. You know, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some turns, clearly. But still kind of beneficial. I wouldn't take this into feud. That's, that's just my perspective. I wouldn't take this into feud because it's too slow. However, with what we just saw, it is beneficial in a certain standing. So what do you guys think? What do you think is the most beneficial? <clears throat> if you look at this from a logical perspective, the MP cost could be a little bit lower. Even if there were a seven, a seven would be a little bit more, a, a little easier to handle. And one way you could also do this too, is you could do with a big boot, choosing five gems to make into yellow gems, but you're losing out on the crossbody. And I think the crossbody is what's really making it worth it. So <clears throat> it's a give and take, really. If they ever come out with a ammo or you make a certain amount of immobile gems and they increase your gem damage by 100%, I think that would be the ideal way to run that. Especially, you know, if that plate did exist or potentially could exist in the future, you could take the big boot, put it instead of the crossbody, do the big boot to charge up the suplex and the back body drop pretty much turn one. And then just unload the cannons after that. Really. If you have Santa Hogan at max trainer level where he's doing an additional 12k damage plus the move damage plus the 1 MP. Then maybe that's a better place to put him is on here with uh, Asuka potentially being over here. If you put Captain Lou to 6 star silver you could do Showboat Cena. Something along those lines. Um, really that's what that's where my brain's going with all of this. So. Who knows? Captain Lou, I believe <clears throat> S tier is only for the pull rate. He's one of the rare cards to get, but I believe he is B tier, to be honest. Um, tours, obviously, like I said before, boss battle, potentially given, you know, if you can, what's his boss breaker abilities? Cracking the shield's good and exhaust is good. Rage, I never see anybody using. But really, this looks very... It looks like something that you can use. The Crack the Shield, definitely for the triple yellow. And the Exhaust, just because Exhaust does come in handy. So, that's going to be the end of this video for Captain Lou. You let me know in the comments what you guys think about him. Do you agree with what I'm saying, being a, he's a B tier? Or do you think he's a little bit higher up? Do you think there's something I'm missing? Just let me know in the comments, alright guys? So, with all that being said, I'm going to leave you the same way I always leave you. Life can be fun if you allow it to be. I'll see you in the next video.